This is Bishop Michael Burbage, and you are listening to the Walk Humbly Podcast. Welcome to the Walk Humbly Podcast from the St. Clair Studio in the Diocese of Arlington. I am Tom Shakley, Chief Communications Officer for the Diocese of Arlington, and I'm joined, so pleased to be joined, by our host, Bishop Michael Burbage. How are you doing, Tom? I hope you're doing well, and all our listeners are doing well, and uh, it's great to be with you today. God is good. Yes, it's a wonderful, wonderful season, time of transition. We're almost, uh, we're on the cusp of the fall here. Can you believe it? Yeah, it's nice. Even the weather is getting a little nicer too. Nice, cool. That's right. And so we've got, of course, as we we enter into fall here, one final uh, culmination event for our Golden Jubilee. We've got uh, uh, our Golden Jubilee pilgrimage. So all in the Diocese of Arlington are invited to join you, Bishop, uh, Michael Burbage, and other diocesan faithful on October 5th for our Golden Jubilee Pilgrimage. Uh, this is our final celebration uh, of our 50th anniversary of our diocese. Right, and to the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, which is uh, always a great place uh, to visit uh, Mary's home. And I am so glad that uh, on October 5th, we are doing that as a diocese, as you said, and this our Jubilee year, our final major event. And we know that uh, while a lot of people join us live stream, not everyone could be uh, physically present in the cathedral uh, for our September 5th right. celebration, although every parish, of course, was represented. Uh, but this is an opportunity uh, for everyone to come to join together. Um, and it's such, it's such a beautiful uh, event, and it's been part of our history uh, for 50 years, making our way uh, to Mary's home in Washington. Uh, it's a uh, a, a day, a, a pilgrimage, which is reminding us that that's what life here on earth is. It's a journey, uh, but not one that we make alone. We make it in the company of one another. So that a, a pilgrimage really uh, reflects that. But also uh, with the accompaniment of Mary, our mother, <coughs> watching over us and protecting us and all the saints. So it should be a very joyful day. I hope if you can make it as individuals, as families, as a parish community, uh, it's a great way to celebrate our diocesan family in this our Jubilee year. And of course, there is no cost to attend uh, and there's no need to register. Uh, people are, are welcome to drive on their own uh, and there should be plenty of parking, of course, at the shrine. If you've ever been to the National Shrine of the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, you know that they're not lacking in parking. Uh, there will also be volunteers there uh, on October 5th directing people to, to where they need to be. Uh, many parishes across our diocese are organizing buses to attend as well if you don't want to drive on your own. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, it's worth checking first with your parish. Uh, check your parish bulletin, call the parish office to see if uh, a bus is being organized uh, in your parish or in your area. Um, and there are also options, of course, uh, for lunch at the shrine. Um, but people are encouraged to bring their own meal uh, and to leave it in the car until lunchtime. Yeah, okay. we'll have confessions available throughout the day, uh, speakers uh, praying the rosary together. We'll, at the end of Mass, we'll be blessing all the religious articles that people may have brought with them or purchased there. Uh, so it's a, it's, and there will also be time, uh, which a pilgrimage should have for people to be alone, to be silent, to be with the Lord. So uh, I hope, uh, hope to see all of you, dear friends. Yes, and of course, you can also visit our website uh, at arlingtondiocese.org slash events. Uh, for all the specifics um, about the event uh, to share with others as well. And there is a Golden Jubilee prayer, uh, which you can find on that event page uh, for this pilgrimage, and all are invited to begin saying that prayer now. Well, Bishop, uh, we had some really beautiful news recently. Uh, five priests from the Diocese of Arlington uh, were recently named by Pope Francis as chaplains to His Holiness uh, with the title of Monsignor. This is a beautiful moment in the life of our diocese. The new Monsignors, uh, as some of you listening may have seen, are uh, Monsignor Robert Selinski, pastor at Nativity Parish in Burke and Episcopal Vicar for Charitable Works. Uh, Monsignor Dennis Kleinman, pastor at St. Veronica Parish in Chantilly. Monsignor Robert Rippey, judicial vicar and director of the St. Rose of Lima Priest Retirement Villa. Monsignor Lee Roos, pastor at All Saints Parish in Manassas and dean for the Fifth Deanery. And finally, Monsignor William Saunders, pastor at St. Agnes Parish in Arlington and the Episcopal Vicar for Faith Formation. 
Bishop, so wonderful. How does one become a Monsignor? Yeah, well, Jubilee blessings continue. Uh, this is a great gift, as you mentioned, Tom, not only for those wonderful priests, uh, but also for all priests. When one priest is honored, we're all honored. Uh, and it's a wonderful blessing for, for the church and for, for our diocese. So, yes, the diocesan bishop would make recommendations uh, to our Holy Father. Uh, and then, you know, it's up to him whether to accept that recommendation or not. Usually he trusts the good judgment of, of the bishop. Uh, it's an honorary title. Monsignor is an honorary uh, title uh, to those who have uh, rendered valuable service to the church. And, uh, and certainly, uh, as, as I said, an honor for uh, the entire diocesan family. What I'd like to see, too, is that uh, the title of Monsignor not only honors the individuals, but also uh, honors their ministries. Uh, so Pope mm -hmm. Francis uh, would like all the Monsignors to be uh, those who are have at the heart of a pastor, uh, and all of these men uh, do. But it also honors their, their certain ministries, too, are, are highlighted. Uh, you mentioned that Father Monsignor Stalinsky is the vicar of charitable work, so that beautiful ministry of Catholic charities and all that good it does for uh, all, all the people in, in our diocese. Uh, Monsignor Saunders, the, the vicar for faith formation, honors all those involved with religious education, Catholic education, the formation of children. Uh, Father Rippy, Monsignor Rippy, uh, I have to get used to these titles. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, working so hard uh, in in the uh, marriage, uh, promoting marriage and sacredness, and helping uh, couples, uh, you know, to be in union with the church, and of course, all of them, uh, the ministries that they carry out, the countless ministries in their parishes. So it's it's also all these uh, priests are very humble, uh, and you know they they don't seek this title or anything like that. So I just encourage them. I said, uh, just see it not as for yourself, but it's for it's for all those you serve. Let us celebrate uh, together. And I, I know that uh, the parishioners uh, in all their parishes and, and those they serve are, are very, very excited for them. One, one of the uh, new Monsignors asked if he could trade the title for an extra week's vacation. And I said, no, it doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. So congratulations oh, to all of them. We'll be having a uh, celebration for them. We have to give them time to get their new cassocks, but we'll be announcing the date where we'll have a, a solemn evening prayer, Vespers, in our cathedral. Um, and Beautiful. it'll be open to uh, all in the diocese. So we'll, we'll get back to everyone with that date. That is wonderful. And yeah, if you'd like to learn more about our new Monsignors here in the Catholic Diocese of Arlington, uh, just pick up a copy of the latest edition of the Arlington Catholic Herald or visit catholicherald.com where you can learn a lot more about each of them and about their good work. Well, uh, an ambitious coat drive is underway. I was amazed when I saw this. It's there. Uh, it's, it's being run to help, of course, those in need this winter. Um, Bishop, would you tell us about this? Yeah, I'm very, very excited about that. As we know, um, people right in our own community, our, our own brothers and sisters sometimes lack uh, the basic necessities in life, including coats. Uh, and as we mentioned, as the weather begins to change, uh, we need to help people uh, to keep warm, to stay healthy and safe. So Catholic Charities and area parishes are aiming to collect 10,000 coats, 10,000 coats, yes, for the homeless, refugees, immigrants, single mothers, and anyone else uh, in need of the uh, region. And organizers are also hoping to collect a wide range of new items, including hats and gloves and scarves. Uh, this is a, we were just talking about ministries being honored. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the beautiful ministry of being an extension of the Lord's charity and compassion. This is a concrete, powerful way to practice charity as we enter into the fall months. And I'm sure if we all, myself included, if we look, look into our closets, <laughs> there are probably some coats and things like that we have not worn in a while. So why not That's allow true. one of our brothers and sisters uh, to have that? A powerful and practical way to help those in need. And we know everyone in our diocese, uh, everyone is so generous and good, especially when they're aware of a need. And I, I really believe we're going to meet this goal of 10,000 coats yeah, so, so between now and September 27th, uh, not that much time, but there's enough time to act. Anyone interested in donating uh, a new or gently used coat can drop it off uh, at Holy Spirit Catholic Church in Annandale uh, any day, daily, between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., uh, and donations are also welcome the weekends of the 21st and 22nd and the 28th and 29th at St. Michael Catholic Church in Annandale, Nativity in Burke, and St. Mary of Sorrows in Fairfax. And if you can't make it to any of these drop-offs, uh, you can visit the Catholic Charities Amazon wish list 
uh, just online. Uh, just just pop it up on your phone or your computer and contribute through an online gift. Make a, a purchase of one of those items on the wish list. Uh, we'll link to that in the show notes. That's great. It makes it easy for people to do. That's wonderful. It's so easy. Yes. Yes. Exactly. All right. Uh, well, we spoke recently, Bishop, uh, in advance uh, a couple weeks ago of the presidential debate that took place uh, between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Uh, recently on his return from Singapore, uh, September 13th, the Holy Father was asked by a journalist uh, on the flight back to Rome what advice he would give to Catholics voting in the United States. Uh, Pope Francis uh, declared uh, that in his view that both were against life. Uh, both, he said, the one who throws out migrants and the one who kills children, both are against life. Uh, direct quote from the Holy Father. He went on to describe abortion as, quote unquote, an assassination, and at the same time urged that we must never overlook, quote, the orphan, the stranger, and the widow, unquote. Um, Bishop, uh, I guess first, do we want to talk a little bit about that debate, or is there anything we can learn from that? Well, again, you know, I, I don't think there's a lot to learn because, unfortunately, I don't think the debate was really a great exchange of ideas uh, and, and policies that we would like to see in, in an in-depth way. Uh, many times I thought the debate went off track, and certainly I don't like the tone of debates of these days. I used to be—I I, love watching debates of the past where there was real— dialogue and respectful conversation. Uh, but anyway, just to, to get to the uh, Pope's uh, comments, too, before that, uh, we're also uh, recording this uh, podcast right after learning of another second assassination attempt That's on right. Donald Trump, former President Trump. And again, uh, I was grateful that leaders on uh, both sides of the aisle uh, denounced that in strong terms. Uh, but we have to be very concerned. And uh, the violence that is in our midst, uh, the evil, uh, attempting uh, again, uh, you know, to take the life uh, of someone in service uh, is just very, very uh, frightening. Uh, we have to pray for the end of such violence uh, and also for those who give their lives in service uh, of protecting the others, the agents and all the different officers uh, who are who have, every day risk their own lives in service of others. So we have to be united in prayer uh, for that. Uh, but, you know, as Pope Francis rightly emphasized, we must always act in accord of our conscience. We've talked about that many times on this podcast, an informed conscience in, in line, in harmony with the, the teachings and the sound doctrines of our church. Uh, so we have to properly form our conscience, which comes from Latin, simply means with reason uh, or with knowledge. Uh, so when we say we're acting in conscience, uh, we're just saying that we're acting with reason. It's not just how I feel, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's forming that conscience. So the drama of the moral and political life turns on whether our reasons are good and, and true. Uh, so let's not absolve ourselves of, <laughs> of moral reason. Let's continue interrogating ourselves in a sense as we uh, consider casting about is what I'm about to do truly good. Am I making a decision that will protect life uh, and that will do the most good possible? And trust God. Uh, we, we, we can't form our conscience uh, unless we're prayerful people because we have to ask the Lord to enlighten our hearts um, uh, and to guide us in, in all of our, our decisions. And so, uh, you know, I think in, in his comments, uh, the Pope was trying to promote the gospel of life in, in all its entirety. Uh, all of life is sacred. Uh, and, and yet uh, we have, if we don't get life right in the beginning and protect the most vulnerable, the preborn, uh, then how can we expect that other issues will be treated uh, with that same reverence for the sacredness uh, of life? And, you know, uh, we, uh, we say that taking the preborn, it's, it's so many innocent lives are taken every day uh, through the horrific act of abortion. So the Holy Father, I think, was saying the gospel of life is at every stage we're reverent and uh, we protect that and defend it. Um, and our votes should reflect that voice. Well, as we talk about the importance of properly forming consciences, we have uh, something great here to celebrate in the Diocese of Arlington. The second annual CALLED conference uh, for young adults takes place this coming Saturday, September 21st. Uh, it's a very special event uh, that take pla takes place in Reston, uh, at which uh, you, Bishop, will be celebrating the, the Vigil Mass on Saturday. Um, the event is, is actually at capacity already, incredibly. That's great to see the enthusiasm and zeal of, of so many young adults and I families. I know. That is great. I think there's over 400 uh, young adults signed up. That does my heart so much joy uh, that 400-plus uh, young adults in our diocese 
could do anything they want on any given Saturday, I'm sure with many invitations, and they choose to give this day to the Lord, uh, to learn more about their faith, to celebrate their faith, to be up with other young adults, to encourage each other in faith, uh, to attend workshops where they their knowledge can be uh, formed uh, and enhanced, uh, to receive the sacrament of confession and ma- the Holy Eucharist. And then also, to enjoy each other, have a, there's a nice dinner and a dancing and all those things afterwards. But the fact that we have over 400 young adults united in their faith in this spirit of joy, it's just, it does my heart uh, a, a lot of, of great. And we have a great speaker. I think he is from Harvard. Uh, I think oh, Arthur, Arthur Brooks. Brooks. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, will be the key, is the keynote speaker speaking on the topics of leadership uh, and happiness, true happiness, what that really means. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's going to be a, a great day. Although, like you said, I think uh, it's really not a commercial because I think we're full at ca- capacity. But maybe if someone's interested, maybe there's another seat available or so. Exactly. Yeah, things change. And uh, although the event uh, is at capacity currently, they, there is a wait list. And right. so, again, if you go to the uh, arlingtondiocese.org slash events and find this called conference on Saturday, uh, you can join the wait list uh, in the event that, uh, that others aren't able to make it. So worth worth doing. Um, we're also in another season right now. Uh, September 15th kicked off uh, Hispanic Heritage Month here. It runs from September 15th through October 15th. Um, Bishop, you will be in attendance for our annual uh, Diocesan Hispanic Heritage Mass and Festival, uh, which takes place uh, at the conclusion of the month uh, at the Cathedral of St. Thomas More on October 13th. Yeah, this is another one of my favorite events. Uh, this is just a great, great day. And I'm so glad we can have it at the Cathedral, our mother church, uh, this year. Uh, it's a free event, as you mentioned, celebrating rich spirituality, uh, our, our beautiful faith, celebrating the cultural music, delicious delicious regional food of our Hispanic brothers and sisters. I like the festival, too. It's really, yeah, it's yeah. very fun. There's lots of music and there's great food. But of course, of course, it's all rooted in our being together at the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Um, you know, in the United States, where more than half of Hispanics identify as Catholic, these weeks are an opportunity uh, to recognize and celebrate the, the diverse and the rich contributions of the Hispanic community, a gift to our diocese, a gift to the entire church. Um, and the Hispanic community encompasses a uh, a rich tapestry, I would say, of nationalities and cultures to our nation and church. And it's great to see them all being reflected in our uh, at Mass and at our festival. Um, and it's also uh, an opportunity to look at the challenges this month is uh, dedicated to Hispanic Heritage uh, Month. Uh, many Hispanic families are facing, uh, such as discrimination, fear of deportation, and, and poverty. Uh, many Catholic Hispanic parents cannot afford a Catholic education in right. our Catholic schools, so we got to, we're working on that as well. So I, I look forward to celebrating uh, this month. The church lifts up our Hispanic community throughout this month, and in particular, October 13th. Something great to look forward to. Well, uh, Bishop, it's been a great conversation. We're already, believe it or not, uh, at our maybe favorite segment, Questions from the Faithful. Okay. Uh, you know, of course, uh, a general reminder for those listening, uh, if you haven't asked a question, we welcome questions. So just email us at info at arlingtondiocese.org with a question you would like to pose to Bishop Burbage uh, or reach out to us on any of our social channels, um, Facebook, X, Instagram, even LinkedIn. You can ask us a question and uh, we'll look at it for the show. So a listener writes, I am in my 20s, and I'm basically the only one in my immediate family still practicing my Catholic faith. It's my hope that my parents and siblings eventually return to the faith. How should I navigate this situation? That's a great question, and I'm sure all of our listeners are are in similar situations uh, where people we love uh, and are dear to us, uh, and that that love is, you know, will never, it's endless, the love we have for them. But we do hope for them. We, we love them so much. We want them to be in union uh, with the church and actively participating. So it's a great question. But first of all, uh, to the uh, individual asking the question, we just thank God, uh, you know, uh, to, for the grace he's poured out upon you, uh, that you are remaining steadfast in your faith, because we know it is by the grace of God. Uh, and so allow those you love, uh, just to see your joy in living your faith. Mm. Um, and I think that sometimes is is the best way uh, to invite others to return to the church and to evangelize. Because people, uh, especially in these challenging times, they're looking for 
where do I find joy? Where do I find serenity? And if they ask us, like, where do you get your joy? And we're able to say, well, really, it's because of my relationship with Christ and allowing him to be such a part of my life and receiving him in the Holy Eucharist. Well, some people will say, you know what, that's, that's what I want. Um, and so don't underestimate how the simple power of your example and witness may touch the hearts of others and, and never give up on, on our family members uh, returning. We know how hard St. Monica prayed uh, for Augustine. And yeah, she, right. you know, she never, th- many, many tears, the but tears eventually Monica, yes. uh, Augustine returned home and so she persevered. So we, we never give up uh, in the power of God to transform hearts and to bring them back, his children back to him. So we always, I always say we always entrust those we love to the Lord. They're always his. Um, and so we pray, pray for them. We give them the good examples. And, you know, and sometimes too, maybe there's a, uh, other events going on in your parish, for example, uh, that you know could be just a, a a small way of getting them back uh, to see the church. Uh, maybe your parish is having a festival, or maybe your parish is having a lecture series, or uh, a jazz concert, or something like that. So maybe. The, and the invitation can be, hey, how about if you come to this with me? You know, something that may not be as intimidating to to people, uh, you know, saying, come with me right now back to church. You know, <laughs> that's like sometimes it's just the gentle invitations and planting those seeds uh, that, you know, begin to evangelize yeah. too. And our parishes have so many things that people uh, can come to and feel part of a community. Uh, but, you know, trust God's power. He makes all things new and he's always transforming our hearts and continue to give good example. The witness of your joy uh, may touch hearts and your family in ways that you don't even imagine. Well, Bishop, we've covered so much good ground in our conversation today. Uh, Thanks, Any Tom. final thoughts? Yeah, it's, it's great to hear all the great things coming up, right? Uh, it's true. In our diocese, there's many things that we're celebrating, and I just continue to pray for all of our listeners uh, that you will have uh, the peace, the serenity, uh, the joy uh, that only Christ can give. Uh, and I pray for that gift for all of you and your families as together we continue to walk humbly with our God. Thank you for listening to the Walk Humbly podcast. Make sure you check out more episodes and all the podcasts our diocese offers on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and our diocesan website, arlingtondiocese.org. You can also follow me on X, formerly Twitter, at Bishop Burbage, where I provide a short gospel reflection each morning and on Instagram at Bishop Michael Burbage. Stay up to date with news, event information, and inspirational content by subscribing to our e-newsletter at arlingtondiocese.org.